Hey gang, so um, I'm just gonna make a real quick video about my experience with some of uh, the eSkate controls that I've used throughout the years and um, what I'm currently using now and why I made the decision to change, uh, to move away from these two controllers onto this controller. After about a, a week's worth of testing, I can honestly say I am sold on the build quality um, and um, the functionality of this controller um, in general. And a uh, quick, quick opinion, if you're in the market to buy one of these, you might want to think again, because uh, this is kick ass. Um, and in short, the reason why I don't like this is because for whatever reason, whenever I do a new build and it's uh, a puck build, I just, it frustrates me that there's that bit of lag uh, on, on these controllers and it's with all of them and it it's just annoying right you're paying two hundred dollars and you and you have to tweak your vest you have to tweak the ramp in your vest to, to get it somewhat reasonable whereas if you just buy like a vx1 flip sky controller plug it in it's it's knee jolting right away right so i don't know what it is it sucks um Point, do something about it. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's user error. If it is, comment. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. So, um, and it got to the point where I was using my tramper wand and my wand would be cutting out on me and I wouldn't want to go back to this. I would still use a remote or prefer to use a remote that cuts out on me, but it has that knee jerking ability to send me launching. Um, so this was, so VX2 was one of my first remotes and I progressed onto this. Uh, and then from this, I went to this. This started, uh, this never failed on me, right? Still worked, it's like a tank. But this, uh, the, the, the tramper wand, it, it was cutting out on me and I figured out it wasn't uh, a pedometer issue. It was, it was a battery issue. Um, the batteries would leak after about 11 to 12 weeks. I'd open up the, the case and I'd find, um, you know, when you have batteries in place for too long, they, they would leak fluid. For whatever reason, uh, the batteries were leaking fluid in here. And whenever that would happen, I'd get joystick errors. Um, I'd give it a shake and it will work again. And even with those joystick errors, I still would have rather used the wand as opposed to this. Now at the time, I didn't know that was the error. I found that afterwards. Um, but during that period, I went out and I bought this guy. And I've been using it for just over a week and I'm in love. It is a simple, reliable, robust remote that uses uh, PPM, same protocol as the puck. Um, the dongle's a bit bigger than the puck. I'll put a photo of it there. Um, really cool remote, on off at the bottom. Charge is USB-C. There's two buttons. Uh, that one is to change your lighting sequence. And this one is to see, uh, check your battery level indicator and change from speed mode one to speed mode two. This is a dead man switch. So you can set this remote up. So you need to hold this in in order for you to go forward, or you could um, disable it, so you can just go forward irrespective of whether that's in or not. So it's like a chainsaw, right? You've got to pull that lever in order for you to operate. And I quite like it. I, I disabled it, but I am going to enable it because there's been a few times where I've been leaning over my board, putting my bindings on and my, all my heel straps, and I've got a remote dangling. When you've got a few things on the fly, there's been instances where just, I don't know, just brain fart moment where you do hit, hit the throttle and you're not expecting it and it throws you off your feet. So I think I am gonna enable that again. I do like the way that on off switch really works as opposed to having to hold a button on. Um, although I do like the, the way the tramper one works and the way you just turn it off and it auto turns off as well. So yeah. So dead man switch, accelerate, decelerate, you get a user choice when you buy the remote to how you want it configured, whether you're left or right handed. Um, and the second button is what I really like about this remote. So there are, in Melbourne where I live, daylight savings is coming to an end and I wanna increase my visibility for night rides. So uh, the second button allows you to scroll through 11 different sequences of light modes. Um, and during the night, 
this lights up really well. You can see it, it's visible. Um, so this with some um, uh, lights on your board, I think it'll in uh, definitely increase your visibility, right? Um, and the main point that I wanna get to, the reason why I really, really love this remote was when I unplugged, so I went from this back to um, the puck. When I unplugged the puck and I plugged this guy in, there was no lag. Like th this puck, or every puck I use has that little bit of lag on acceleration. It, it annoys me to no end. I plug this guy in and boom, <laughs> it's, it's, it's gone. No lag whatsoever. So however this has been coded, configured or built, I rate it highly um, because it has that same kick that I was getting on the um, uh, Tramper want, and that's why I really love it. I missed that kick, so I'm glad I've got it back again. Um, so yeah, so that's why I found, I'm fall, falling out of love with the puck, and I'm falling in love with this telemetry. I don't need telemetry, right? Um, it, it's just one of those things that for me, it's become nice to have. When I first started e-skating, I had a DeVega, and I just found myself, oh, how fast am I going when I'm going over that jump? And I thought to myself, hang on a second, when I'm riding my dirt bike and I'm trying to clear a double, I've got no speed oh, on the front of my uh, bike. So I'm like, instinctively, you know how fast you should be going, what gear you should be in. And I think the same rule applies to e-skate as well. And that's why I got rid of the DeVega. That's why I'm not a fan of telemetry anymore in general. I'd rather just go analog. And if I want to see how fast I've gone on my ride, I'll just start up a, um, a tracker app um, and problem solved, right? But yeah, anyway, this remote is awesome. If, you've, if you can find one, get one. They're on Etsy. Um, I think they're sold out. I think I bought the last one. The, the guy that makes them, he makes them all in Europe um, and he has this awesome manufacturing process set up where it's full robotic. He does the PCB layouts. It is total DIY homeschool engineering um, and that's why I love it, right? It is, uh, it's built with passion. Um, uh, so I'll put a link to that and, and, and the guy's videos. He's really good at communicating. Um, and if you're watching, thank you very much. Um, so I'm looking forward to the next iteration, which is currently being worked on, which is a split trigger version of this, similar to the way the split trigger on an Evolve skateboard works. Um, now, I know the Maytech and Flipsky have split trigger remotes, but they're bloody ugly, man. It's like, I, I, I wouldn't want to touch one for fear of being turned into a toad. They're just awful. So um, I'm really looking forward to a, uh, a more thoughtfully designed uh, split trigger remote and testing one out. I've never tried one. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, so um, awesome little remote, cool little light sequences to scroll through. Um, takes away the lag that is on the puck, um, and I love it. So I'm gonna continue to enjoy it. Um, so yeah, so really this isn't a review. If you wanna know more about any of these remotes, go to their website. This is merely me just saying that I love this remote. I don't like this remote anymore. This one's itchy as F. Um, and this one's proven to be solid. Maybe I'll do a follow-up in six months' time and I'll report back on how I've gone. Hope that helps you out. Um, and there's uh, enough information for you to run away and have a think about what remote you should be buying for your next build. But anyway, take care. Ciao.